Welcome, everybody. How is it going? You're listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 549. Today, we're going to talk about junior black belts. This one might ruffle some feathers. We'll find out. Who am I? I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show here at Whistlekick. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Adams. And what do we do at Whistlekick? Well, we we do stuff for traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists probably like you. And if you want to know everything that we're doing, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to see our store and everything else we've got happening. And if you see something in the store that you like, use the code podcast15. That'll save you 15% off and it helps support the show. If you want to see more about this episode or any of the other episodes we've ever done, because they're all available, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You're going to see two episodes come out each and every week. And the purpose of the show is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to show your support for what we're doing, there are a lot of ways you can do that. You could make a purchase, like I already said. You could share an episode. You could follow us on social media. You could tell tell a friend, tell somebody that you train with about what we're doing. Maybe pick up one of our books on Amazon, leave a review on Google or Facebook or Amazon or anywhere you could think of, or support our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlecake is the place to go. You can support us with as little as two bucks a month. We've got exclusive content over there only for the Patreon subscribers. And it's a little thank you for those of you who are willing to show out a few bucks. So junior black belts, Andrew, talk about, yes. talk about, a, a what's, what's the, what's the, the, the metaphor I'm looking for a bag of something. What is it? Uh, a bag of I'm not coming up with it. I don't bag know. of bees? Uh, it's a hop- uh, yeah, could <laughs> That's be. Not, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say bag of bees, but it's uh, a hot button topic. Yeah, the whole notion of the title junior black belt, right? Because yeah, it, we could be we could be stepping on a landmine. We could be. We could be. And and let's see what happens because you know, you know, you chose this topic, which which I like and I support because I think if nothing else, people are gonna think about what they think about the notion of a junior black belt. Yeah. Thinking is a good thing. Now we should probably start with what we grew up with, you know, our, our eye towards, you know, what a junior black belt was or anything, or at least our personal experience. You know, mine's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I earned my black belt at 16. We did not have a junior designation. I was expected to um, know all the same things in my black belt test uh, there are a couple of people out there who may be listening who were there uh, and they would be able to vouch for me. There was nothing uh, diminished about it for my age. <laughs> How about you? Uh, it was similar. It was very, very similar. In fact, at, at the first school that I trained at, you couldn't you were not eligible to test for black belt until 16 at a minimum. And there was no junior black belt demarcation. It was just you tested for black belt. And if you started training at five years old, you still were not going to be testing for black belt until 16. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that was pretty much my experience. I started at four and I was ready when I was ready. Mm -hmm. But that's not how every school does it. No, and that's okay. Everyone is welcome to do what they think is right for them. There certainly are schools out there that have junior black belts. Uh, And I thought it would be interesting to talk about because it's potentially something that we don't have a lot of uh, interaction Mm. with. And I think that that's a good way to preface the conversation. Uh, Kind of those two points. One, it's not something that either of us have personally experienced. Neither of us have been a junior black belt, number one. And number two... I mean, I, I think we're both pretty free market when it comes to martial arts. You know, you do what works for you and, and I'll do what works for me. And that's OK. Yep. I don't think we need to start comparing black belt from one school to black belt to another school. You you do what you're what is best for your school. That's what's important for you. And it's interesting you bring that up because I think that is what causes the greatest amount of frustration. I think that's where the concept of junior black belt becomes really controversial is this idea that the black belt has some kind of standard that is universally applied and that a junior black belt breaks that universal standard, yet it's not a universal standard. No, there's not, no universal standard at all. People do what what works for them. I mean, in, in some schools, a 
black belt means you have a rudimentary understanding of the entirety of the curriculum. In others, it's based roughly on an amount of progress and an amount of time. For others, it's, um, you know, yet another rank. Yep. Black belt in a specific school is only a way to measure how one student is from another student, yeah. not from one school to another school. Yeah. And so if we take a step back and we start talking about junior black belts, we're not talking about a black belt who happens to be under the legal age of 18. We're talking about a separate designation. Some schools have an entirely different belt. Some schools, they you know, there's a, a certain stripe on it or, or something. And when I see young black belts, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, they typically have some sort of designation like this. I see this at competition all the time. Uh, where have you bumped into this? I've been to a handful of tournaments and have seen it. Uh, and, you know, and, and I'm, a, I'm online in a number of Facebook groups and see it in other a- areas as well. But yes, often the junior black belt ranks that I've seen are designated differently, which I think is, I think is very important. I think if you're going to have a junior black belt, it's important that there be a demarcation so that the student knows this is not a black belt within the school. This is a junior black belt uh, because I'm assuming if a nine-year-old student has a black belt, that a 35-year-old student who tests for their black belt at the same school, I suspect the amount of material that they have to know will be different. Mm. So it's unrealistic to expect that the nine-year-old, their test for their junior black belt will not be the same as the 35-year-old's test for black belt. Right. So I think it's important that the student also understand and the school understand that junior black belt is not the same as black belt. Right, right. Anytime that the expectations are different, the rank should be designated different. And, you know, depending on the size of the school, that may require a separate belt. You know, I've, I've trained at some really small schools, you know, a dozen people. If you don't want to put a separate belt on that kid because they have a junior black belt, everybody knows that they have a junior black belt. I don't see the harm there. Sure. You know, rank is an, is an external manifest manifestation in theory of what people know. And yep. And I would agree a small school, everybody knows that this, you know, 14 year old that just tested for a black belt is a junior black belt. But I do still think it's important that the student understand that to test for adult black belt, the requirement is X, Y, Z, which is more than you may have tested for. Right. Now, one of the things that I see people get wrapped around the axle on is where this line gets drawn. I've seen some people say, you know, if if you are in a black belt prior to 18, then you should be a junior black belt. And I've heard other people say, you know, 12. I there There's like everything else in martial arts, right? We argue over the minutia. And then I've heard plenty of other people say, why bother having a junior black belt? And where and and actually, before I sit, throw that, it sounds like you wanted to respond. So you go ahead. No, no, I, I no, I didn't. Okay. I was waiting for you to finish. It, it sounded like a like a breath in, like you were gonna go, uh, <laughs> listeners. If you can't tell, we we record this without video just to make sure the audio comes through as good as we can. So we don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing over there. <laughs> I'm wearing my gi. Are you? It's, I'm no. wearing a whistle kick hoodie. What am I wearing? For I don't a have a whistle kick hoodie. Don't we should fix that. I don't have a whistle kick t-shirt on underneath. Here's where I see people get most butthurt about this. When their idea of a black belt has to do with a standard for self-defense. No yes. nine-year-old's going to be able to defend themselves on the street. Okay. Well, and, and that may be true. Or you could see the average nine-year-old. How about the average 75-year-old? Mm-hmm. And for me, a lot of this comes back to, we did an episode a long time ago. I don't remember uh, what episode it, it is, and I'll, I'll look for it. The reason people don't get demoted. If we're going to apply those standards, if we're going to say, in order to be a black belt, you have to make a reason, you have to have a reasonable shot of defending yourself on the street, then the moment someone ends up 
uh, in a wheelchair or, you know, becomes 87, they should be stripped mm-hmm. of their black belt, which I do not believe. Yeah, and I would agree. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. So then what does the, what should this mean? And, and again, this is this is our thoughts. This is what we think. Now, bef- before we get there, though, there, there's one other thing I want to throw out. The the main justification that I have heard for having a junior black belt is, well, they they run out of ranks to be promoted to. I've heard this too. Uh, so what? Well, but then they'll quit. Oh, so because you have tied so much of their value and your encouragement process to their rank, to their promotions, if you don't have a way to promote them anymore, they're going to quit. Ah. Well, and that also that also lies in uh, how many adult black belts do you know that got their black belt and stopped training? I suspect a fair number. Plenty. Yep. I would, and I don't have experience with this because I have not trained in schools that have junior black belts, but if you... You know, I could see it very easily being the case where a student, a child student gets their black belt and thinks, well, that's it. I'm done. Uh, Adults at least have a a more of an understanding of how the martial arts works in terms of it's a long term thing that once you get black belt, it doesn't necessarily end. I could see it being more difficult for a child to understand that and feel like i've reached everything i need to reach now don't don't get me wrong i i I don't think that then should lead to junior black belt and then second don and third don and fourth don i've seen it i've I've seen a lot of stripes on some some young children yep (sighs) we've talked maybe ad nauseum on martial arts radio over the last five plus years about ego and rank and the pitfalls that arise at the intersection. And this is grooming people in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. If the only way you can keep your students motivated is to keep putting stripes on them and to keep promoting them, and you genuinely fear that they will leave if you do not promote them, and that gets you to cave, yes. It is, it is an indication that your reward system is, is skewed. Now, that doesn't mean it's, it's easy. It is hard to keep people motivated. But there are, as, a, as an example, there are plenty of Krav Maga schools out there that do not use belts and have had students training for five, eight, ten plus years. Mm-hmm. And they don't use the same external reward system that a lot of traditional arts do. And I think that that's proof. You take a look at dance classes. You take a look at yoga or ballet. Music. Music, right? It, the, the reward is the skill. Now, I'm not saying that we throw out the belt system. You know, I, I've, I've talked about belts quite a bit over the years. But I think it's a good opportunity to take a step back and say, okay, if this is something that we're doing, do we have to do it? Are we doing it because we have to? Or are we doing it for other reasons? If you're doing it because you have to, I think that should be a sign to uh, that there's something there to explore. Yeah, I think there's an issue, an underlying issue. And this is probably the point where we've got some people shaking their fists or yelling or, for all we know, swearing at our recording right now, telling Andrew and I, we don't know what we're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe we don't know. Maybe we're completely off base. Maybe we don't understand the circumstances at a particular school. And that's okay. Because what's the goal here? The goal is that you're thinking about this, that you're looking at what you're doing and saying, you know what? This makes sense for my school or my students or me or or whatever. And if that's the case and the results speak for themselves, meaning that you are producing great martial artists who become better people and they remain in your school and they go on to great things or opening their own schools, then by all means, you're doing it right. What do you think? I'm a fan of that. Yeah. But if you have small children running around with a bunch of stripes on their belt and they don't know the curriculum and they don't have focus and they are, let's say, not only are they not at the 
adult standard for black belt, but they're not even at a reasonable respect, uh, self-awareness, discipline level for their own age, then there's a big problem. Absolutely. And I think, is it possible for children to get to that stage of, of respect and professionalism? Absolutely. I mean, we see gymnasts win gold medals in their early teens. Mm. So clearly there is a way to have students be very professional and have the technical ability that is required by your school to have a, a junior black belt. But I think if you have a 12 year old child who just has a black belt and has not been delineated that they're a junior black belt, I, I think they are also as a, as a potential issue there as well, because I think there's more to being a black belt than just a technical mm. in, in my opinion, you know, tech technically children can learn that stuff. Although having said that there are some, uh, I, I can only speak for the training that I've done, but there are some, uh, techniques and things that I would not want nine and 10 year old children to do because it would be harmful to their body. You know, their body is still developing and still growing. And so there are things that an adult black belt in schools I've trained in, they're going to learn different techniques than children just because their bodies are finished growing. But that's just a technical part. You know, to me, it's, there's a technical aspect to being a black belt and there's a character based aspect as well. And that character aspect is way more nebulous. You know, there, there has to be some sort of psychological development that the children are still going through that the adults aren't. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I had somebody that I know and because of the show, write to me about this circumstance that, and it, it, I'm going to connect these dots in a moment. Don't worry. And they wrote to me and said, you know, I've got this person who has been training on their own for years. They don't have an instructor and they've come to me seeking rank. And, and, you know, I'm okay with their skill. They, they know what they're doing. I, I don't mind that, but they're, they're kind of a jerk. And, you know, I just, I don't really like them. We bounce some emails back and forth and, and, and I said, you know, would, would you ever invite this person over for dinner? And he said, no, I don't want this person in my house. And I said, okay, when you promote someone to any rank, but especially black belt, that person is a representative of you and your school. And unless you want that person out there as a public ambassador, unless you are willing to let people judge you and your instruction in your school by that individual, to me, they should not receive a black belt from you. That is the only universal standard that I see that should be applied. Yeah. Does the world need more black belts that are jerks? No, no, we got, we got plenty. Let's, let's have fewer. Absolutely. And I think that goes to that, that character part that, you know, we should be doing what we can to promote uh, reputable. I don't mean ability wise, but as good people, black belts. Yeah. I, I, I've met a lot of people. I've met a lot of martial artists. I've let, met a lot of black belts. And I've talked to a lot of instructors about their students. And the one thing that I look for that I think should be in the conversation, whenever somebody tells me about their student, it's not how well they do their technique or how high they jump or any of those things. It's, you know what? They come to class. They work hard and they keep getting better. And if you can mm -hmm. say that about somebody, I'm good. Because I think that that is key. And I think if we look at a black belt, what what's one of the things it should show? That there is a reasonable chance this person is going to continue to train. Yep, I, I would agree. What are we leaving out? Are we missing anything? Well, I think we should think about if you if you do have a junior black belt, let's say you do have a twelve year old mm. black belt in your school, how do you progress them when they become sixteen, eighteen, twenty? Do you just continue to give them a junior black belt, or do you then transition them to an adult black belt? How do you do that? Most of the schools I know with a formal, you know, distinct junior black belt have that child test for an adult black belt at whatever that that age is that age requirement. 
And that makes sense to me. You know, if you haven't been through that test, you shouldn't have that rank. Yep, and I would agree. I think in, you know, on the upside, most of those schools, that is indicative of the fact that that black belt test is intense enough that they shouldn't be putting a 12 year old through it, no matter what, you know, what the parents think or, or as ready as they may be. The things mm -hmm. that I faced as a 16 year old testing for black belt, I definitely could not have emotionally handled, even if I could have physically handled them, I could not have emotionally handled them at, you know, 11 or even 13. Mm -hmm. What would you do? But let's, let's, let's leave this as, as kind of the last situation. And then, you know, if anything comes up from, from this, but let's imagine, you know, you've spent enough time teaching. Let's say you get someone who starts at six years old. Would you teach a six year old? Let's start, let's start there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And we do in okay. our school. So you've got a six year old and they're coming to class and they're training on their own. And, you know, maybe, maybe mom or dad comes to, to the adult classes and, you know, the family does their thing on the weekend. And, you know, we, we've seen that kid. I think we've all probably seen that kid that just finds their, their niche in martial arts and loves it. And it's the thing that they do. And, you know, they progress up through the ranks and, and yeah, they're six, they're seven, they're nine, you know, they're a kid, but they know the material and they're getting it done and they're showing up and they're working hard. And, you know, six, seven, let's say seven years later, they're 13 years old. And you're looking at them and saying, you know what, if this person was 40, I would have no problem testing them for black belt, but mm -hmm. they're 13. What do you do? For me personally, I would, you know, ha I would have been having discussions with this student prior to them reaching where they're at and discuss the differences uh, uh, between uh, developmentally and psychologically uh, an adult and a child. And, you know, if if I were to if I did decide to do a junior black belt type system, uh, I think the biggest thing is it needs to be clearly delineated. This is what you will be tested on. And when you turn 16 or 18 and you wish to test for full black belt, this is the criteria that will be required. I think the biggest thing is having it clearly delineated so that everyone knows. I'm a huge proponent of open and honest communication. And I think 99 times out of 100, when things break down, it's because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, something that just came to mind, and pardon me as I kind of talk through this, because I have not had this thought before. What if it was a completely separate rank? What if, I, I imagine in your karate school, you you folks don't use red belt, correct? Correct. Okay, so what if what if that 13-year-old, because they, they, know, they know the physical curriculum, but they have been identified as not meeting the, we'll say the emotional or developmental standards for a black belt. What if they test for a red belt? Interesting. What it, and stay at red, stay at red yeah. belt until they're ready for their adult. Black and maybe belt. they have stripes, right? Maybe, maybe we, you know, it's it's because you can you can get belts with all kinds of funky color accommodations now, right? You, you know, wh oh, absolutely. What if what if they stay on that red belt? And I'm using air quotes that red belt track until they reach that emotional standard. Yeah, I mean, again, as long as they know what the black belt test is going to entail. I, I, I see no problem with that. And, you know, there are schools out there that, that use red belt. So maybe they, you know, maybe you give them a brown belt. And then I've seen schools that use both. So you pick a different color. Maybe it's camouflage. Sure. I, it's, I think the color itself is arbitrary. But yeah. what if it's distinct enough from that black belt that it continues to give them a path? You know, we, we talked about the, the, uh, the challenges of that and, and our feelings on that. But, you know, I don't expect the world changes overnight and let's face it there are schools out there that um prioritize that rank as um as a carrot to, to keep people showing up mm -hmm. but if it's a whole different color maybe it i i like that i hadn't thought of, i had not thought of that either uh, but I do like that concept because it, it again, delineates that this person is not a black belt, but this person has enough technical ability over whatever rank mm -hmm. below them is. So I do like that idea. Yeah, me too. All right. 
You got anything else to add? I think that's where I'm, I'm going to settle in. No, that's great. All right. Well, for anybody out there, if you have thoughts, if you do it differently or you feel strongly about this, you know, there are all kinds of ways to, to get at us and, and let us know what you think. The easy of course is the easiest, of course, email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And you know, you can you can head on over to episode 549 at whistlekick martial arts radio.com, leave a comment in the blog there. Or, you know, just when we post it on social media or wherever, you know, I want to, I want to know what people think, you know, we're, we're better together as we talk this stuff through. Right. All right. If you do check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you're going to see all the episodes, all the photos, links, videos, transcripts, you name it. It's over there. You can sign up for the newsletter too. If you're not getting our newsletter, get our newsletter. We put some good stuff in there. And if you want to support us in the work that we do, Make a purchase at whistlekick.com. Share this or any other episode. Leave a f- some some episodes for a friend. You know, tag them, share them, whatever. Or the Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com slash whistlekick. And if you see somebody out there wearing a whistlekick hoodie or a whistlekick t shirt or hat or whatever, you know, say hi. You know, talk 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 whistlekick. Find out how you both found the company. Our social media is at whistlekick. My email address, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and Andrew, have a great day. Mm-hmm.